feeling retro. Hey there retro lovers, welcome back to the channel where we review and enjoy all things retro. Today we're taking a look at a retro hi-fi from Denon. If there's a retro piece of kit you'd love us to get our hands on and review with you, let us know in the comments section. We love retro gear here and we'd love to know what you, the retro community, would love to see. Denon are an electronics company whose roots go back over 100 years in the history of Japanese electronics. The Denon brand appeared in 1947 and has been through a whole series of mergers over the years involving other big players including Nippon, Onkyo and Marantz. It's a company that specialises in professional and consumer home cinema and audio equipment and they're well known for their high-end products. Today we're taking a look at one of many hi-fi systems that were designed and built by Denon for the consumer market which delivered a superior build quality, high spec, stylish design to the average Joes like me and you. The 6.5 system that we're taking a look at today is of such a high quality that it competes not only with other compact systems like the Sonys and Pioneers that we've taken a look at on this channel already but it also holds its own against larger separate component systems that were at higher price points from the day. I've given it a listen in a few different rooms and a few different acoustic environments around my house and it produces a great rich sound. Today we've got four separates making up the system. We don't have the mini disc player which was one of the original parts but we do have the PMA 6.5, the integrated stereo amplifier on the top. We also have the original remote control that came with that separate too. Underneath that we have the stereo cassette deck, the DRR 6.5. Below that we have the AM and FM stereo tuner, the TU 6.5. And at the bottom of our stack we have the DCD 6.5, which is the stereo CD player. Today we've got the system hooked up to some Sony speakers. They do a decent job and they just about hold up to the power and capabilities of the system. Let's take a closer look at the integrated stereo amplifier, the PMA. On the front panel of this system here, it has a main power button, which you press in with a lovely click. In between those two, we have the operation status indicator. When it's green, the power is in standby mode. When it's flashing green, the muting circuit is activated. And when it's lit red, power is on. Next to that, we've got a headphone jack. And next to that, we have the source direct select button. When this is selected to on position, which it already was, the signals are played directly without passing through the control circuits. And that provides a really high quality sound. When it's selected off, the sound quality can be adjusted with the loudness button, the balance control, and the bass control, and the treble control, which are all along the side here. The loudness button is a similar on and off. When that's on, it emphasizes the low and the high frequencies and that allows you to achieve a natural sound when listening with the volume turned down. We've got the three dials over here that's balance, we have bass, and we have treble. And the first of the three, the balance control, adjusts the balance of volume between the left and the right channels. And as you would expect, when it's in the central position, the volume on the left and the right channels is equal. Similarly, with the bass, having this selected to on gives us full control of these three separates. And you can adjust the bass sound. And similarly with treble, you can use that to control the treble sound. Above that, you've got a really lovely chunky dial, and this is the function selector and the lights on top, which are the indicators. You can, you can use this to select the source to be played. And then of course, the corresponding indicator lights up. Function switches, depending on which way you turn it. So as we switch it through and we turn it, you get a nice clunky click, and it shows you which source we're with. If you switch to a source that isn't plugged in at the back, the lights can go a little bit funky. So if we keep it on mini disc, it has flickered and then it tries to force itself back to CD, which is one of the separates that's plugged in. I really like this. I love these big bulky clickers and I love that simple lighting up display as well. Slap bang in the center, you've got the main volume control. That's a nice smooth dial. You've got the lovely text here. You've got that on all four of the separates. Just gives it a nice classy finish, I think. So before we move on to the tape deck, let's have a quick look at the remote control unit. Let's slide it open. So the main part is split up into different sections. You've got the mini disc functions, you've got the cassette deck block, tuner block, and a CD block. When you slide down and you show the secondary panel of buttons, you get to switch between functions. No batteries. I wonder how many times I've done that. So similarly to the dial at the top right hand side, you can switch between functions. You can see that light shifting across as we press that. On the bottom left, you've got a nice sleep timer which allows you to put the system to sleep after a certain amount of time. 
and we'll take a look at the other controls as we move through the separates. The power amplifier in this system runs 240 watts and its output is 6 OHMS, which is pretty decent spec, I think, for a consumer. I think if you were going professional, you'd probably want to have 4 OHMS. And with its dimensions of 250 by 112 by 376 millimetres, the amplifier on the top here is by far the biggest of the four separates. It is a bit of a beast, weighing at 6 kilograms. The large sized power transformer is carried, and the speaker driver capability is raised, making this a fantastic amplifier and a really top end piece of kit at its time and still holding its own now. Let's move on to the DRR, the stereo cassette tape deck, which we've got just underneath the amplifier here. A much smaller piece of kit and the same size as the tuner underneath it. This is 250 by 98 by 314 millimeters and 5.9 kilograms, so still fairly heavy. Because all of the separates have their own AC input, this does have its own on and standby mode as well. And just next to that, you've got the small open and close. We've already got a cassette in. Underneath that you've got a button here that's CDSRS. That stands for CD Synchronised Recording Button. You can use this button to record the CDs, which are in the separate on the bottom, whenever the DRR is connected in the system. We've got the nice big display here, which we were missing on the amplifier. Over to the side here we've got the stop button, which allows you to stop playback. And next to that you've got the rewind button and you've got the fast forward button. You don't have to hold those two buttons, which you do have to on some other similar pieces of kit. Underneath those, we've got the small recording or recording mute button. When pressed once, the recording pause mode is set. You can see that button's here. When pressed in the recording pause mode, a blank space of approximately five seconds is created, after which the recording pause mode is set. To record in forwards position, you have to press the forwards play button and then hit record. To play in reverse, you hit the reverse button and then hit record. Over on the left hand side we've got three very small buttons. I'm going to start with the one in the middle which is reverse mode. So the reverse mode selector button, you'll be able to see this little image changing on the display, allows you to play one side mode, two side mode or continuous mode playing through both sides of that tape over and over. On the left hand side of that we've got the Dolby NR selector button and this allows you to change between off which it just was, type B or type C. Next to that you've got the counter reset which allows you to reset the tape counter. So the Dolby NR selector here which we've currently got off allows you to reduce the hiss noise that comes with cassette tapes. There are two types on this one so you've got Dolby B, Dolby C. B is the most commonly used type and then Dolby C reduces noise even further. On the front here they do promote that this is a Dolby HX Pro system. So this set is equipped with Dolby HX Pro which automatically controls the bias according to the levels of the frequency components of the input signal. And that improves the high frequency dynamic range and the frequency response. With the Dolby HX Pro, which this system has got, it's activated automatically during recording. So the same improvement can be achieved when cassette tapes recorded on this cassette tape are played on other cassette decks as well, even if they're not equipped with Dolby HX Pro. This is one of the standout features of this piece of kit, not technology that you'd see on all of these micro component systems. The remote control allows you to do most of those features. It allows you to play forwards and reverse. It also allows you to stop. And you can also record and record mute, fast forward and rewind. Below the tape deck, we've got the stereo tuner, the TU 6.5. A really simple front panel here. Again, you've got the nice chunky power switch, which is a small timer button next to that which allows you to set the timer to operate at a set time throughout the day. And below that, we've got the display button, which switches between the reception frequency and the time each time the button is pressed. Over on the right hand side, we've got memory set. You can see that changes here to memo, and you can use that as a memory button when pressing AM and FM stations. Just below that, we've got the band, which allows us to change between AM and FM. The bottom right hand side, we've got a mode button down here, which switches between AM and FM, but it also switches between auto and mono. So when it's in auto mode, it receives FM broadcasts in the stereo and allow you to set automatically according to the type of broadcast and the strength of the signal. The hissing noise between the stations in the FM band is muted whilst this is on. If you switch to mono, it receives FM broadcasts in monaural regardless of the broadcast type. And you can set that mode if there's a lot of noise when the auto mode is set or if the signal's weak. Let's move on to the DCD stereo CD player. Another big one, this is about the same depth here as the amplifier on top. 
we have the on and standby and over to the right hand side we've got the pause button and underneath that we have a very small time button and when I press that you can see on the display it changes between single total and blank and that allows you to switch between finding out the elapsed time of the current track the remaining current track time of the current track or the remaining time on the disc and next to that we have the ability to fast forward and skip tracks and if you hold down the buttons they act as rewind you can also hit the random button here and as you can see it's now selecting a random track to play and we're stuck on random track four thanks for joining us today on feeling retro to take a close look at denon's 6.5 series hi-fi system if you've had a high quality denon system just like this one and you want to share some memories or some features of it that have really made it stand out to you as a high-end quality piece of kit let us know in the comments section below remember to check out our other videos Subscribe to the channel, and if you weren't already, I hope you are now feeling retro.